Hi, and welcome to tutorial video 4 for Liquid Physics 2D. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing how to implement uh, multiple particle systems, and also talk a bit about the particle visualizer, and I'm going to show how to implement um, multiple visualizers for one particle system. So, um, this is the scene that we've created um, while doing the past tutorials. Um, so let's say this is your game and it's just called Crazy Mess Game. Um, let's say if we had uh, another area in the same scene of your game with particles. So I'll just create that now. So I'll just create an empty game object. I'll go to component, like with physics 2D. Um, in this case, I'm going to use an edge. Um, so an edge is just like a, a 2D line with, with no mass. So um, I'll just draw some kind of receptacle. Stop drawing. Uh, okay. So, by the way, um, while I'm doing this, I'll just warn you that um, I've noticed that uh, edges sometimes react unpredictably with particles and sometimes they can cause a huge performance lag and kind of create particle explosions and lots of weird behavior. So <clears throat> uh, I would advise you against using edges um, if they're going to be interacting with particles. Um, they're, they're good for interacting with bodies though because they're you know they're quite cheap. Um, you know they have no mass and they're good for for static bodies as well. So I'm just going to do this anyway. Just um, to see what happens, but but I would uh, warn you against doing this. Um, so now I'm going to make some particles. So we'll say new game object, say component liquid physics 2D particle group, and I'll make a square. We'll make it uh, good and big. Uh, yeah. Okay. So right. So let's say this is the scene uh, in our game. And let's say uh, <clears throat> these particles over here and these ones over here will never interact. Let's say they're in two different areas of your game. And uh, let's say even if, if they do, you don't care. Um, in this situation, this would be a really good uh, opportunity to use multiple particle systems. So in uh, Liquid Fun, in the same world, uh, sharing all the same bodies and fixtures, you can have multiple particle systems which uh, sort of operate independently. So I'll just uh, show you how to do that. <clears throat> so if we have a look at our uh, LP Manager prefab and the uh, child uh, particle system uh, game object. So I'll just hit Control D and duplicate that. Um, and we'll, we'll just press play now. We've got two particle systems. Now, when I press play, the LP manager will actually automatically assign these an index. Um, so this one here is call number one, and this one's here call number two, just to differentiate them and, and make sure that they're uh, they're unique. So, um, uh, of course, when I when I hit stop, uh, that that is not serialized. So um, it's a bit awkward, but uh, I'm just going to manually put this in um, now, so I, I'm going to know which one is which. Um, so this is <clears throat> has got index one over here in this field, and this one has got index zero. So then, if I look at a particle group, we'll see it has a corresponding field called particle system I'm in. So the default is zero. So um, all these particle groups are in particle system zero. So I'm gonna put this one in particle system one just by changing this. Um, so now we press play and, well, nothing really has changed, but if we move this over here and uh, see what happens, we'll see that um, these two kinds of particles are, are ignoring each other, they're like ghosting through each other. So the benefit of doing this um, is that uh, it just it saves a lot of calculations, it saves some performance. It means that uh, this system just calculates all its potential collisions independently, and so when it does that, it ignores all these because they're not in the system, and vice versa, these ignore this one. So um, 
depending on what your scene is like, you know, you can save kind of exponential amounts of calculations by doing this. Um, also, yeah, another thing I can mention is that uh, one of the reasons that this uh, library kind of runs uh, so efficiently and, and it kind of runs on mobile devices is that it kind of um, makes a lot of assumptions and uh, kind of, you know, I guess uh, uh, there's, there's less possibilities of what can happen. And uh, one of those, uh, a big important one, is that in a particle system, every single particle has got exactly the same uh, size, their radius, and exactly the same density. And so they're all identical, so it just makes the calculations a lot cheaper. So by having multiple particle systems, uh, you can have uh, particles with different uh, sizes. So if I go to particle system one, and let's say we change its radius from, we'll just change something really big, we'll change it to like uh, 0 0.2 meters. So if we press play now, we'll see uh, these particles are, are really big. I and mean, we can make them even bigger. Let's uh, let's make them like six, make them giant. Okay, so um, <laughs> not sure why you want to do that, but uh, there you go. Um, so okay, that's a different particle system. So you can have as many of those as you want. Um, next thing I'm going to look at is the particle uh, visualizer. So um, yeah, we'll just have a look back here in this part of the level. So <clears throat> this uh, particle system uh, zero, um, you can see that the particle system has got a child object, this uh, particle visualizer. And uh, like I mentioned before, I, I wanted to keep uh, all these things as modular as possible. So in your own game, you can replace or edit these and kind of get exactly what you want. Um, but if we have a look at the particle visualizer, um, you'll see how it works is that it actually uses the old uh, ellipsoid particle emitter and particle render in Unity. I don't actually use the um, the Shrieken, uh, the new particle system, because it actually, it doesn't, uh, uh, there's some bug or some issue, it doesn't seem to render properly in some circumstances when you're manipulating uh, the particle's position manually, as, as I do. But um, the reason I'm using this is because uh, Unity's uh, particle render and particle system are they're designed to draw, you know, hundreds or thousands of exactly the same thing <clears throat> very efficiently. So I think it's it's a good choice for rendering the p physical particles in this uh, in this uh, physical uh, particle simulation. So the important script here is uh, this LP draw um, particle system script. Um, so you can see uh, first of all. It's got this particle draw scale. So what that you notice when, when I changed the sizes of the particles, they also appeared bigger and, and appeared smaller um, depending on, on their actual size in the simulation. So by changing uh, their draw scale, I can actually uh, you can just change just how big you want them to appear uh, irrelevant of how big they actually are. So if I change this to something like uh, you know let's say twelve something really big, we'll see um. All the particles here just uh, appear, you know, massive. And you see with the uh, the additive, they're kind of uh, they're very very intense. Um, and you know, vice versa. If I put it down to something small, like you know, uh, one, let's say, um, we'll see there they're really small. You can you can see the individual particles; they're not actually blending together. Um, so, as well as being able to have uh, multiple particle systems in the same world underneath the same LP manager. Uh, you can also have <clears throat> multiple particle visualizers underneath the same actual particle system. And, uh, you know, there are obvious reasons you don't do that because uh, at the moment, all, all these particles uh, here in the system, they may have different colors, but um, they're all using the same sprite, they're using the same shader. Um, so there's limited possibilities for what you can do there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to load up that um, lava and water scene that we looked at briefly before. Um, yeah, I'll save this. Okay, so here's that uh, lava and water scene that we saw briefly before. 
So as you can see, it's uh, maybe a kind of good technical example scene, you know, showing how to do the slav and water scene, but you know, visually it's uh, kind of a bit lackluster. Um, you know, the reason for that is, uh, let's say, all these particles, they're being drawn using the same visualizer, so they're being drawn the same scale, they have, you know, using the same texture and uh, using the same shader. So um, I'm going to just attempt to make this scene look a little bit better by um, just uh, using multiple visualizers in the same particle system. So have a look in our LP manager in this one particle system. It's got this particle visualizer uh, child object. So I'm just going to duplicate that with control D. Um, I'm going to do it twice. So we have three of them because I'm going to have one visualizer for the water, one for the lava and one for the, the rock that gets created when they uh, hit each other. So <clears throat> if we have a look at these um, particle groups, they have a field called uh, user data and uh, this is just an integer and it's something uh, I've included which I, th I think is, is very handy for doing uh, gameplay stuff so instead of you know <clears throat> selecting or, or doing things with particles based on their flags or color or other things like that you can give it just this uh, intrinsic sort of um, <clears throat> quality that the user data so in this scene the water particles being spawned uh, are given a user data value of 2 and the uh, lava ones are being given a user data value of 1 and uh, <clears throat> I, I know just already that the uh, the wall ones when they are generated uh, are given a user data value of 0 so if we have a look at our particle visualizers so we've got three of them beneath this one particle system as child objects so we've seen the uh, <clears throat> particle scale uh, field before. Now there's also <clears throat> this one, draw particles with this user data field. So this these visualizers will draw the particles that have that user data. So uh, one of them is zero is the default. So uh, let's say we'll leave this at zero. Um, let's say the the water was uh, was two. So we'll uh, yeah, okay. I'll make this one too, just so I don't get confused. So this one is going to draw the water, so it has the draw particles with this user data value of 2. Um, the lava has got uh, 1, so we'll say the second one draws the uh, lava. So <clears throat> I'll set this one to 1. And the third one... Um, it's going to draw the wall, so we're going to just leave that at zero. Um, now, <clears throat> one thing we mustn't forget is that if we have a look in our uh, particle system, um, <clears throat> I briefly showed these before. These are the kind of um, bools you can set, basically telling the particle system which actual data to retrieve um, every uh, on every update uh, um, loop. You know, um, when you're drawing. So <clears throat> at the moment, we're just getting position, which it always gets by default, and it's uh, getting colors, and it's not getting anything else. So if you want to draw these based on their user data, then we're going to have to get user data. So <clears throat> if you want to use uh, different or multiple particle visualizers with one particle system, uh, you've got to set get user data in the particle system. So let's just press play. And <clears throat> we'll see nothing's changed, um, uh, except now, if we go to, let's say, the second visualizer, which draws the lava, um, let's say we change its particle scale to something much bigger, say six, so they should appear way bigger. So you can see they're, because of the additive, they're kind of adding together and they're a lot more glowy now. Um, uh, let's say... Also, the um, the water ones, like uh, at the moment, you know, we have a look at uh, the material. It's got an additive shader. We don't really want that for water. We want uh, really kind of alpha. So I'm going to just create a new material and, and use a different material with a different shader for um, the water particles. So uh, I think the material I'm using uh, is just called default. So I'm just going to duplicate this material. Um, we'll just call it alpha. 
I'm not going to bother changing the texture. Um, obviously, I could if I wanted, but um, I'll just change the shader from, let's say, uh, I'm, I'm using uh, mobile because, you know, efficient. So mobile particles, uh, alpha blended. So <clears throat> go to our first particle visualizer, and I'll just uh, drag this material onto it. Um, so, yeah, there we go. We have the using this alpha material now. So uh, see what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> okay, it's uh, it's uh, it's very um, it's a bit dark, but um, of course uh, it's got a gray background, so it's kind of understandable. Um, so finally, these uh, these wall particles. Like so, <clears throat> I I don't want them to be white, and I definitely don't want them to be additive. So. Uh, uh, once again, we'll uh, make a new material. So I'll just I'll duplicate alpha for now, and we'll just call it solid. Um, and I'll just change the shader to uh, let me see mobile. Uh, I'll just change it to diffuse just to uh, see what happens. So we go to our third particle visualizer, and uh, yeah, I'll just uh, drag in this uh, solid material into it. And uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so yeah, there we go. That's um, <laughs> you know, these are just appearing as squares, but uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's looking a bit more realistic. Um, and you know, obviously, you know, uh, if any of you out there watching this are artists, um, I'm sure you'll be able to do absolutely fantastic things with this. Um, okay, so uh, thanks for watching.